AWS broke the Docker API. Okay, what is an API? API stands for Application Programmer Interface. It just basically means an interface, a standard way of communicating with somebody. It's like when you go to a store and you pay for things in dollars. You don't want to go to a store and then they say, oh, we don't accept dollars anymore, we need pesos. I mean, that's a bad experience. As a rule, you don't want to break this, this interface ever, right? But in our industry, it just, it, it kills me because this interface is messed around all the time and I'm left, you know, picking up the pieces. So wh why, why do interfaces change? I, I, I think there's a couple of reasons, perhaps just sheer incompetence. You know, when, you, when you're changing something, you just don't realize the impact that's gonna happen to people. Technical reasons, like perhaps, you know, you know, Apple switched to ARM and, you know, it doesn't have a one-to-one, -one, but you, you can get, you know, they, they offered like a translation thing with, with the Rosetta so they can get around that. So they haven't completely messed up the API, but there's still some pain points. Uh, what are the reasons for changing the API? Just maybe just for some sort of power play or something like that. So in the scheme of interfaces, the probably the most important interface on application level is the, the web HTTP request and response interface. That's the most important. Below that, of course, you get, you know, your, I've, I've talked about this in my, in my video about static binaries, your ABIs and, and things like this. To Windows credit, they have never broken their API as far as I know. Linux has in the past, I think other people have. So Microsoft, great job. Other companies suck, including especially the Linux system, but I think largely that's due to shared libraries, video above. Now, back to AWS. So this time of year, reInvent, I'm very excited. And the most exciting thing for me was the new Lambda container image support. Yes, I can run Docker images in Lambda without messing around with the zip files. So I thought, but then when you look into the example, oh, the interface is a Lambda event. It's not, as I mentioned, the standard HTTP request response model. So basically, AWS broke the API because any you know, typical Docker run that listens on a port is not gonna work in the serverless managed compute Lambda environment. I mean, I've been I've been searching around, watching the videos. Can they run native Go apps? Yeah. Can you run native Go apps? No. Lambda. The, the, the easiest way to explain it is actually Lambda is not running the container. Lambda Lambda is building a function from the container image. So Lambda is all about event-driven applications. And that all means sending events to Lambda, which then invoke based on those events. Traditionally, if you're building Docker files or uh, Traditionally. Docker applications, you maybe more uh, understand the port and socket model, where you expose the port and the socket to the outside world, and then you run something with it. So they're not using port and socket. They expect you to change your application to fit the Lambda model. I can I can hear from Julian's accent that he's probably South African like myself. So hello Julian, but I really don't like this. It sucks. Okay, it's probably the most versatile but thing, but like do what Apple did, G give her a translation thing, right? Because now I'm scrambling for trying to figure out how to translate my my normal web app into to, into Lambda. Like, how do you get a container now? into this translating uh, to the Lambda interface. Like how do you proxy the, the, the web request to the Lambda interface? It's now, it's a, it's a real pain, it's a real pain. So my initial findings is that there are like, there's this Node.js library where you can, where you can like, you know, import it as usual and it will sort of proxy, um, It will proxy the thing. It will proxy the the web request to Lambda. 
There's also uh, something that I use in Golang called Apex Gateway. I've also got an example here you can have a look at. But it, it's just it's just painful. And I just really wish that APIs like this would not break. And it's a bit of a letdown. And you know, this whole reInvent thing, this whole COVID-19 is a letdown. I should, be, I should be on the Las Vegas Strip now, mingling with my fellow geeks and getting drunk in the evenings and having too much, too much weird, rich American food. <sighs> Instead, I'm in Singapore just whining about this broken interface. If you guys have any tips about or, or good examples about broken interfaces, do, do comment below. It's so annoying, isn't it? Please like the video, please subscribe for more. Screw this stuff, honestly. I mean, underneath Docker, is, is, with all the C groups, as I mentioned, is a freaking nightmare. And then, and then you've got Lambda interface proxying that you have to, oh my God. I think, I think when it comes to serverless, I think you're just better off with zip files. Just, just you're better off with the zip files. I don't, what is the value of using uh, an AWS container besides making everything slow? Just get, just build a static binary, put it in a zip file, upload it to Lambda. That's how you should do cloud computing, really. That's how, that's, that's the best way. It's the best way. Oh.